And in this episode, we're going to take a look at the Amiga 600 because there's a row of keys that don't work. It's down to this stupid thing. And we're going to upgrade it to a new modern one. I can't believe how nice it feels on this keyboard now. And afterwards, we're going to see whether the, the AGS runs on this Amiga, um, which is the Amiga game selector done by Paul Vince. So let's get down to it, get it stripped down. And let's get to it. So this is a 600 that we're having problems with, um, I believe it's a row of keys, I can't remember whether it's TGB or whether it's YHM, but it's, it's something across here, um, which, you know, these, these membranes in these old things, that they are getting a little bit on. So I've opened a shell window, which I'm going to pan you up to that and let you have a look there, and we'll go through the keys and find out exactly which ones aren't working. And then, and then, we're going to do something to make it even better than what it was original. We're going to get shut of that old plastic PCB and we're going to replace it with one of the digital retro bays keyboard replacements. Now this is a proper PCB, it is, it is floppy, but it is a real PCB. And what we're going to do, we're going to change the ribbon cable to and we're going to put it onto this little adapter board. So if you are having to take it in and out, it's not going to destroy the ribbon cable and if the ribbon cable does get damaged you can just replace this bit which is great so that's what I'm going to do we'll get, let's get you up to the screen well, let's have a look and see which keys are not working so we're back up at workbench now and I'm just going to go through each key one by one and, and let's see if we'll get anything yeah I know some of you might be screaming out there in the comments at the moment why are you using the test program um, because I don't have it on a floppy disk at the minute to plug into this one and this is the easiest way to do it if you aren't so let's start with the one key and we've got one two three four five five don't work six seven eight nine zero I'm not going right across because there's no point look they all work uh -huh. so we discovered that it was number five that doesn't work no matter how hard I push it, it doesn't work. Um, we're gonna have a look at R, R works, Y works, T doesn't. Does F work? Yep. G, oops, sorry, F, G doesn't work, H does. So we've got five T, G, and I'm suspecting V and N will work, but B won't. And, and here's B. So yeah, so 5, T, G, B, all in one line right across there, which would suggest a data line that's gone on the membrane or it's the connection in the back there where the keyboard, the ribbon cable plugs in. But let's strip it, let's get down to it and let's have a look at this PCB. I am going to try and have a look and see whether they've got this right or not. Um, but I've got the is it ECS for the Amiga 500 um, AGS Amiga Game Selector, which we're going to try and put this in. We already are up and running on a workbench anyway. You've seen that. Um, but I'm going to put, put AGS in and see if this comes up after we've finished. So I'm not going to bore you with the teardown. I'm just going to flip it over, take the screws out, and I'll come back to you when we get to the PCB. You've seen loads of teardowns on these before. I don't think I need to go through it again. So I'll be right back. Right, I'll just sort of show you inside here. Um, so what we have to do is, with the keyboard, where it comes out, you just lift that tag up. Because we're not going to use this anymore. Um, I did say I was going to try AGS and see whether that boots or not you can see it's already got a compact flash in there I don't know whether this is the same or not I would imagine but this has all been bonded down 
So I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slot, slide that out of there. Take that one out of there. And put that into there. So that should have a ZGS on it. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we'll, we'll find out together. So we've now got a 16 gig AGS in the 600 and some of you might be asking and saying what's that little board well that is an original Commodore one meg expansion so the 600 has one meg and obviously it's got an IDE port it were also known as the um, pointless Amiga back in the day um, saying that you know once you've got an A500 with an half meg upgrade then it's a one meg A600 I mean you've stolen the other side of the keyboard you know where the numpad used to be on this side um, so you've got you pay more money for a 600 we're getting less of a product type of thing um, so that's why everybody said back in the day that it were a pointless Amiga what they wasn't realizing it was is it has an IDE port there's a 600 and these days with having accelerators and stuff like that that IDE port comes in really handy so the Amiga 600s are becoming quite sought after right let's get back to that bloody keyboard so this is the keyboard that we've just taken out and you can, as you can see there's all them screws on the back so we've got to get all them screws out to get to that membrane that's inside here so let's shift all this out of the way let's bring that keyboard into play so here we go Holy moly, yeah, so there's quite a few screws on that, isn't there? So if we just gentle with this now, we should just be able to lift this plate off. And this PCB should just be able to lift straight off. Wow. <laughs> so it may have some bad carbon contacts coming down here. It could have a break in the, the ribbon cable going up here. It could be poor up on the end of the connector, which well, you can see that or not, but I'll try and show you if I can. So it could be bad up there, because if you look, they are just little carbon pads that's on the rim of the ribbon cable. So I mean, it'll grip roughly around about in the middle. So I mean, if there's any bad contacts, and they do look a bit rough, don't they? Try not to shake. Ha! So yeah, you can see that some of them are a bit rough on that left side down there. So it might even just be a bad connection there that's causing it. But we're going to find out, aren't we? So it's got to go that way up. So I reckon, let's put this on here. Flick that clip up. Should just pike up. From right. Pull out. Pop up. <laughs> yeah, pull out. So we just pull that little clip forward and then we can slot the ribbon cable inside. I'm presuming it goes that way around because there's only pins on one side of that ribbon. I don't know whether you can see properly or not. There's nothing on that side, so the pins will be down at the bottom. So I'm presuming it goes that way around. And once it's in, we just click that back down. Like that. So that's solidly in and the same is done at the other end but it normally comes with it on anyway so that, that's all set up now so we should just be able to drop that in on top of there and just before i drop that in off top of there what i'm gonna do is just get some ipa and clean this and just have a quick touch round on the pads um, of all the keys before we put this on So, <laughs> what I do is I take the IPA and I just pour a little bit in the cap. I'm going to put the cap here so it's a bit closer for me, but you've seen what I've done. So, all I'm going to do is just get, take a cotton bud, 
dip it in and just like that. Just give them a clean, a bit of a wipe, you don't have to do much. I wouldn't suggest going mad. It's just a case of touching over and wiping over. I'm doing middle ones because we know that them ones were main culprit. We didn't test the F1 keys up there, did we? So we don't know at all. I'll just keep going over these. And you guys watching out there, did I miss any? <laughs> I don't know, I think I've got them all. <laughs> so, but yeah, so, right, PCB time. Move that over there. Yeah, it's a brand new PCB, but you should always check anyway. Just to get a shot of that. And just to make sure that you haven't got grease off your fingers or anything on there. So it is good just to, just to whip over each of them connections on there. Okay, next step is to put it in there. So let's get a shot of this IPA. Try not to touch the keyboard with the contacts anymore. We'll bring the keyboard unit back down here so we can see what we're doing. Let's just, there's no keys there, is there? No, we'll flip that round. Hold it on the edges. Now there should be a load of plastic locating places. If we just wiggle it around gently, it drops into place. So there's one there, one there, one there. Yeah. And then guess what? We've got to put all them screws back in. <laughs> so here we go. That's it. We've got location, location, location. It's all about a location. Screw time. We're in, we're done. Time to plug it back into the Amiga and boot it back up. What I might do first is take that AGS um, CF card back out and put the other one back in it so we can test the keyboard um, in shell. Um, and then I'll just switch it off and we'll test the AGS as well and see how that goes. So that's what I'm gonna do now and I'll be right back. Right, semi-ish kind of together. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you how, how this connects up and goes in. Um, so all I've done is put a mouse mat underneath the keyboard for the time being. I'm just going to hold it with my thumb and tilt it up because we're, we're all connected. But can you see? Up at the top there, that slot. So that's where I took the clip off from the old ribbon cable. So this, you should just be able to swing up and slot. See? Straight in, like that. Done. So now, does this keyboard work? So we're just gonna start it up and pan you back up to the screen again, and we'll see if 5TGB works. Does it work? I'm going for 5TGB. 5TGB, yes. So I'm just gonna press one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight, 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 eight arrow backwards like we're delete doesn't seem to do anything up there help doesn't 
F10. Doesn't show anything in shell with the F buttons. Escape brings that up. Tab. Q. Qwerty. Yep. U I O P. Backspace. Enter. C T R L. J L S F. Okay, that works. Caps lock lights up, lights off. Does it work? Yes, it does. So across the next row, A D. Mm, a S D. F G H J K L yeah. blank key don't do all and return with no other does. So shift book shift key. Yep, shift key works. Um Z I'm just moving cursors around, cursor keys, but it don't seem to it wants to copy and paste for some reason, I don't know why. So alternate and P, we get that. Amiga key and P, we get small p. So CTRL, Amiga, Amiga should reset us. And it does. So that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. So let's try it with the game selector. Ignore me telly flicking around like that. It do not particularly like the 15 kilohertz signal from here. But once Workbench comes on, um, it just it boots up anyway. But it's just a bit silly. There you go, look. See? <laughs> Who knows? So, right, just give me a second and I'll switch it off and we'll plug this um, AGS in and see if that works. So I have done nothing at all. I'm just downloaded the ECS AGS image and I've written it straight to the CF card. I've done nothing else. Um, Paul does some wonderful stuff, the developer of the AGS. Um, and I'm just hoping, and I'm pretty sure that this is just gonna boot straight in. I've not tested it, I've not tried it guys. Some people might do it on YouTube videos, but I like to show real life things if I possibly can. So let's flick that switch. Does AGS boot? Here we go again with the flitchy flashy. Just give it a minute. I can see the LED. Come on, come on, baby. Oh, I've got music. Now, I didn't have music earlier on when I tested it, which was very, very strange on that CF card, but it might have just been them games that were on that CF card. I'd only just sort of installed Workbench on it, and I hadn't done much with it at all. Um, so, let's go for good old Lemmings. It's a nice, easy game that we know should work on pretty much any system. Of course, it was one of the first games that came out, I think, rightly, 1993 or 1994, one or the other. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Well, uh, come on, Lemmings. Leisure to suit, Larry. <laughs> have a look at that, guys. You'll, you'll have fun in that. Uh, so, uh, Lemmings on holiday. Let's try that. Seems to be working. Will it spit its dummy out? Or will it load? Oh, cool. Oh. AGS2 helper failed. But it's still booting. I'm seeing activity. Top left corner of the screen keeps flashing away. Ah, we're in, look. Oh, sorry, I bumped the camera. So, play. I play. Will it work? Will it work? Stupid bloody monitor screen. No, oh, what do we want? I don't know, can't see.
I'll try him. Oh yeah, that'll do. <laughs> well, seems to be working, doesn't it? <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Good old lemmings. So, thanks Paul Vince for the AGS. That seems to be working nicely. Um, I'm going to pack it all up and play some other games now and try it out. But yeah, yeah, let's have a chat at the end. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. So yeah, what do you think? Um, I'll do like that. Amiga game selector. It was absolutely cracking. Good stuff with that, Paul. Absolutely cracking stuff. Um, I've got it on my Amiga 1200. I've now got it on my Amiga 600, which really, to be fair, just sits in the shelf. It's Amiga 1200. Well, we know about that, don't we? And now it has digital retro bays, PCB in there as well, so the keyboard's never going to pack in. It's a really nice unit inside it. It's never been recapped yet. I know what you're going to say in the comments. Um, but it's perfectly fine, the board's clean, it's working. When I get issues with it, I'll recap it. But until then, I like to keep things original. So yeah, we've played Lemmings with the AGS and the keyboard worked a dream. What an easy, easy fix that is. Absolute doddle. Anybody at all can fit one of those PCBs to this keyboard. So if you want to have a look for that keyboard, PCB, I shall Put a link in the description for you, straight to the website so you can purchase one if you want. I've got one in the A1200 now, I've got one in the A600 now. I think that's about it for me, for the time being, for PCBs and membranes for keyboards. Um, so yeah, so if you've enjoyed this episode, give us a great big thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell for all those up and coming videos. Uh, I've not done too much just lately, um, but I'm hoping to get back into the swing of things. It's been a bit warm, there's always an excuse. Um, I do repair in a very small room and it does get quite warm in there with soldering irons and then the PC is running all the time. Um, I have to keep the door shut if I'm recording as well so the heat escalates and we all you know it, t-shirts off <laughs> and I'm sweating like mad. So it's not nice to be stuff like that. So we've just had to hold back a little bit. We have got the Amiga 12, sorry, the Amiga 2000 to continue. Um, we have another Amiga 2000 we'll need to be looking at as well. Um, we've replaced the socket in that, the CPU socket, and it's not liked it. So it looks like there's a microfactory in a trace somewhere. So we need to have a dig into that one and see if we can get that one rectified. So, once again, check in the description. All the links are there. There's links to our YouTube Retro Repairers group as well. Um, that shows you all people that's in there. Pop along and have a look at their channels. They're all doing great. Joseph Retro Bits, Captain Commodore. A retro for you, absolutely wonderful and fantastic people do some great stuff. So pop along and have a look at them. So that's it for this week, um, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.